From the Telesur headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela, uh, welcome back to From the South. I am Luis De Jesus. Let's take a look at our headlines. And Cuba has announced it will begin clinical trials for a vaccine candidate against COVID-19, which should be ready on January 2021. In the United States, Democrats formally nominated Joe Biden as their 2020 presidential nominee. And President of Mali, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, announced his resignation following this Tuesday's coup d'etat. We'll start right away with the news. Stay with us. And Cuba is set to conclude trials on a COVID-19 vaccine in January 2021, according to information on the website of the Cuban Public Registry of Clinical Trials. The results of the trial named Soberana 01 on the vaccine candidate, which was registered on August 13, will be made available on February 2021. And the government of Mexico reaffirmed on Tuesday its commitment to collaborate in health strategies against the pandemic in the South American region and the Caribbean. The announcement was issued by the Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Marcelo Ebrard, who stressed that Mexico participates in all international efforts in the COVID-19 battle. Ebrard informed that the meeting of ministers of the community of Latin America and the Caribbean states was held stressing that the region will be able to obtain the vaccine between 6 and 12 months earlier than expected in an equitable manner. The concept was also endorsed by the G20 summit as well as the General Assembly of the United Nations. Guatemalan indigenous community and rural workers continue to demand the support of the government after the violent acts that resulted in the destruction of the rural houses that the eviction of and the eviction of locals. Indigenous people in central Guatemala were attacked by an armed group that burned several of their homes over the weekend. The residents denounced that the violent attacks are motivated by the interest of evicting the local rural workers and, the claiming, the, and claiming the court fields. The attackers completely destroyed six houses and damaged other 11. We have a little cardamom product where they are. What they want is to take over our crop. They want to harvest this crop that is coming in. That's why they are intimidating us. They are taking us out of our homes so that no one bothers them when they come to cut our crop. On Saturday night, those people who are invading the farm enter violently. They spread our home with gasoline and set it on fire. They burn all our belongings. We are barely left with the clothes we are carrying. And Venezuelan Foreign Minister Jorge Arriaza welcomed this Tuesday his Turkish counterpart Mevlut Cavusoglu during their arrival of medical supplies from Turkey. A couple of weeks ago, we received a flight with nearly 20 tons of health equipment supplies to face the COVID-19 in Venezuela, including ventilators, respirators with Turkish technology, rapid tests, the same plane that our friend Mevlut has brought, despite that this is an airplane that is not made to carry the load, so molecular PCR tests, so we are reviewing all of our agreements. And meanwhile, Turkish Foreign Minister Kavu Soglu reiterated his commitment to continue to cooperate with Venezuela to address the COVID-19 pandemic. Our assistance to Venezuela and its fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. You don't have to thank Turkey for its help because we're brothers and we're assisting each other in difficult times. We're friends through thick and thin. In another subject, in Chile, Mapuche spiritual leader Celestino Cordova has signed an agreement with the government and called an end to, these, to his 107-day hunger strike. Negotiations between the Ministry of Justice, the Mapuche Ancestral Authority, the Medical College and the Office of United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights concluded with at least eight agreements reached. According to a statement issued by the Ministry of Justice and Human Rights, included was the... Authorization for Celestino Cordova to visit his home and sacred altar for 30 hours after having made a full physical recovery for which he is to remain in the Nueva Imperial Hospital, where he was recently admitted. Once recovered, he can opt to be held in the semi-open prison regime, which would, which would see him serve his sentence in an education and work center. 
The same would apply to other Mapuche political prisoners if they agreed to end their hunger, their hunger strike. In Brazil, the human rights and research group Leipzig Date announced that around 2,000 families have lost their homes in Sao Paulo since March, with some other 1,000 more at risk to be left homeless during the upcoming weeks. Unemployment rate linked to the lack of, comp of a comprehensive strategy to face the COVID-19 pandemic have triggered to a sus unsustainable situation for Brazilians. Social activists in Brazil say the number of families who do not have the means to generate income in the midst of the pandemic is every time higher, thus they are being forced to go to the streets, homeless, in a try to feed themselves. According to figures offered by Brazilian authorities, at least 28 homeless people have died and some 286 have been infected with COVID-19. Many people end up in extreme poverty due to coronavirus. Those who were poor became extremely poor, so there was an increase of socially vulnerable people. I started working on December 19th of 2019, but then, in the middle of March more or less, I lost the job due to the pandemic and since then I couldn't find another one, so I had to come back to the streets again. And in Colombia, former president Álvaro Uribe Vélez, who is under investigation for alleged witness tampering, resigned from his Senate seat on Tuesday. The Supreme Court placed Uribe under house arrest earlier this month on charges of bribery and procedural fraud, representing the first time ever a Colombian court has detained a former president. Senator Uribe Vélez sent a letter to the Senate president, Arturo Char, explaining the reasons of his resignation. Meanwhile, the Colombian Senate is due to vote in a plenary session whether or not to accept the resignation. Also, Colombian lawmaker for the Alternative Democratic Party, Ivan Cepeda, noted that Uribe's resignation does not affect the ongoing investigations against him. The fact that Uribe resigns from the Senate does not mean under any circumstances that the Supreme Court of Justice raises its mandate to advance in the investigations and to summon Uribe to a trial. Uribe, as a senator, used members of his legislative office in order to contact several prisoners in different prisons across the country, paramilitaries, so they could testify against me. Likewise, using his status as a senator, he started a campaign around a debate I initiated in the Senate and also another debate I participated in, in the House of Representatives. In this sense, the mandate to rule on these acts still lies in the hands of the Supreme Court of Justice. We'll go now to a short break. Follow us in Twitter at Telesur English and Luis Telesur. We'll be right back. And we're back with more news. Democrats formally nominated Joe Biden as their 2020 presidential nominee Tuesday night. As party officials and activists from across the nation gave the former vice president their overwhelming support, during his party's all-virtual national convention. The moment marked a political high point for Biden, who had sought the presidency twice before and is now cemented as the embodiment of the Democrats' desperate desire to defeat President Donald Trump this fall. Tuesday's speaking program underscored Biden's challenge, challenge as he seeks to inspire a new generation of voters. More than a week after the presidential elections contest protests continue in Belarus, in the midst of this situation, the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, spoke with the German chancellor, Angela Merkel, on the political situation in Belarus. More details with Lisandra Andres. Russian President Vladimir Putin reiterated his rejections of external interference in the affairs of Belarus in discussing the situation in that country with German Chancellor Angela Merkel. In a telephone communication, Merkel and Putin carefully analyzed the situation in Belarus, where the opposition refuses to recognize the re-election of President Alexander Lukashenko last August 9, when he got over 80% of the votes in favor. The Russian side considers unacceptable 
unacceptable any interference in the internal affairs of Belarus by different European countries for the protests in the neighboring nation. In this context, it was found that any attempt at external influence will lead to a further escalation of the political crisis in Belarus. Both leaders expressed hope for an early normalization of the situation in the nation, according to the Kremlin press service. Also, Putin had a conversation with the president of the European Council, Charles Michael, before a meeting to be held tomorrow by the European Union to analyze the situation in Belarus. Putin expressed concern over attempts by several European states to pressure the leadership of the Republic of Belarus in all possible ways to contribute to the destabilization in the internal political situation. In turn, a source of the European Council said that Paris discussed several possibilities to reach and facilitate dialogues between the Belarusian authorities and the opposition and even express mediation in this sense of European security and cooperation. The president of the European Council and Puri agreed to continue in contact on the subject of Belarus after the European Council meeting on August 19. Thank you, Lisandra Andres, for that report. And United Nations authorities have welcomed the verdict issued by the Special Tribunal for Lebanon regarding a 2005 attack that claimed the life of former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafik Hariri. The Secretary General expresses his deep appreciation for the dedication and hard work of the judges and staff involved in the case throughout the years. The Secretary General notes the independence and impartiality of the special tribunal and calls upon all to respect the decisions of the tribunal. The Secretary General also calls on the international community to continue to support the independent judicial proceedings that remain before the tribunal. Austrian authorities added the Spanish Balearic Islands to a list of high-risk regions for coronavirus on Tuesday, following a recent spike in cases. Concretely, there will be a travel warning for the Balearic Islands starting Monday. This means that all people who are currently on holiday, they can of course still continue their holiday. Those who return after Monday are obliged to get tested or to go into quarantine for 14 days. And Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas held a meeting with representatives of Hamas and other Palestinian resistant movements on Tuesday to address the deal signed between Israel and the United Arab Emirates to normalize their ties. They tried to delude the world that the United Arab Emirates came to us with a great achievement, which is the rejection of annexation, as if the Palestinian issue is only a matter of annexation. We confirm once again that our position on this three-party agreement will apply to any country that understates this act, normalization from the Arab and Islamic countries. This national conference confirms the consensus to forget the normalization step taken by the United Arab Emirates with the Zionist entity, because it represents a treacherous step on the back of the sacrifices and steadfastness of all Palestinian people, as well as the sale of the Palestinian cause at a low price and little money. It did not bring anything but shame and loss to the Emirates and the Arab and Islamic nation. We call on the brotherly people of the Emirates to reject this normalization and the necessity for all people of the Arab and Islamic nation to reject the normalization because Israel will not be a neighbor, but rather the enemy of the nation. We are continuing to resist the normalization, the deal of the century and the annexation of territories. And a protest took place in front of the United Arab Emirates Embassy in Tunisia's capital, Tunis, on Tuesday to reject the United States broker deal between the country and Israel. Demonstrators stressed that the move denies the rights of the Palestinian people. The latest peace agreement is the third signed between Israel and an Arab nation following similar deals with Egypt in 1979 and Jordan in 1994. This rally is to denounce what the United Arab Emirates has done, a step towards normalization with the Zionist entity which we consider shameful and which testifies to a denial of the rights of the Palestinian people through Israeli integration in the region and a renunciation of the choice of resistance. We expect 
that the positioning of the President of the Republic will be clear in this matter. Today, the Palestinian people are surrounded after being abandoned by several states in the region. Therefore, they need all the free men in the world and mainly Tunisia because of its experience in the democratic transition and its free people. And the director of the Pan American Health Organization has stressed that the COVID-19 pandemic has caused a mental health crisis in the region, while noting that domestic violence cases are on the rise in the midst of the lockdowns. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused a mental health crisis in our region at a scale that we've never seen before. It is urgent that mental health support is considered a critical component of the pandemic response. Mental health illness is a silent epidemic that has affected the Americas well before COVID-19. It is important to note that these ongoing stressors are also contributing to a related problem that needs urgent attention, a rise in domestic violence. And we have more stories coming up after this final short break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. President of Mali, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, announced on Wednesday that he is resigning from his post after a coup d'etat. I would like at this precise moment, while thanking the Malian people for their accompaniment throughout these long years, for the warmth of their affection, to tell you my decision to resign from my functions, all my functions, from this moment on, and with all the legal consequences, the dissolution of the National Assembly and that of the government, may Allah help and bless Mali. And the outset president also addressed the nation to highlight his personal happiness to have served as president, pointing out his achievements, his achievements made for the National Army on his term. For seven years, I had the happiness and joy of trying to put this country back on its feet the best I could. Because first, from my first mission as head of government of this country, I was convinced of the great effort to implement for the strengthening and life of the Malian army. And therefore, this idea of a law of military programming and orientation. I think every moment has its truth. And meanwhile, the chairman of the African Union Commission, Musa Mahfi Mahamta, has condemned the arrest of the Malian president, prime minister and other government figures while also refusing to accept any political change as the result of violent acts. Musa Faki also called on the international community, including the economic community of West African states, to oppose any use of force to change the government in the country. Authorities in Greece and Cyprus continue to call on the Euro European Union to take action following Turkey's latest moves in the eastern Mediterranean region. An anachronistic behavior on the part of Turkey that negatively affects the efforts and the real will of Greece and Cyprus for conditions of security and stability to prevail in the wider Eastern Mediterranean region. For a long time, Cyprus and Greece have pointed out that the appeasement of Mr. Erdogan will result in an unprecedented escalation of Turkey's delinquent behavior, and unfortunately, this is what we are experiencing today in different directions and at different levels. The escalation of Turkish aggression is directed against the European Union and must therefore lead to the escalation of the European reaction to deal with it. Turkish provocations show contempt for the clear positions of the European Union, the U.S. and the states of all region. They denigrate European values, international law and the law of the sea. In another subject, Turkish authorities announced on Tuesday that preparations are ongoing for the reopening of schools on September 21st, despite reporting increases of over 1,000 coronavirus cases. 
Within the framework of the protocol we signed with the Turkish Standards Institute and the framework of the protocol signed by the Ministry of Education, about 2,000 inspectors are currently being trained. These inspectors will evaluate our private and public schools and will give out My School is Clean certificates to our schools that meet these standards. In the school's common areas and in specific points, there is hand disinfectant and stickers calling for one meter of social distancing. And our classrooms are widely spaced and we are arranged so our students, so our children can sit while social distancing. We haven't seen any issue or anything. In this regard, we are very happy about our school. Kenyan health authorities confirmed 271 new COVID-19 cases on Tuesday, pushing the total over 30,000 already. Today we report 271 people who have tested positive after sampling 4,019 cases in the last 24 hours. We now stand at 30,636 positive cases in the country and we have also pushed our cumulative number of tests to 398,585. Among these 266 cases that we are reporting today, all of them are Kenyans, with the exception of four who are foreigners. Kenyan authorities also call on young people to avoid reckless behavior and observe restrictions in order to curb the spread of the COVID-19. Young, healthy people without any underlying condition also succumb to this disease. So. The messaging must now be tuned and we'll continue to urge these young people to stop the reckless behavior, the feeling that uh, they are immune to this disease, the, the flouting of the regulations that have been put in place so that uh, we don't spread this disease. Nigerian health authorities confirmed 410 new COVID-19 cases on Tuesday, bringing, bringing the total number to almost 50,000. The majority of the new cases were reported in Nigeria's largest city, Lagos, with 210, followed by the federal capital territory with 45 new cases, and Ondo State with 30 cases. Meanwhile, more than 37,000 people have recovered from the virus. The death toll stands at 981 after four new fatalities were reported on Tuesday. And we've come to the end of this news brief. Remember that you can find this and many other stories at our website at telesurenglish.net. And you can also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. For Telesur English, I'm Luis De Jesus. Thank you for watching.